hey GED students. So you're not gonna see anything just like this on the GED itself. What we're doing right now here is isolating this skill, making sure that we really understand what exponents mean and kind of getting a little bit of vocabulary so that when we do move up to the more complex style problems, we're ready. So let's take a look. It says match each exponential expression. And you know, that's the first place where my students freak out. Like what in the world is an exponential expression? Guys, remember an expression is just math numbers and symbols. Basically, um, it's a math phrase as one way to think of it. Not a complete math sentence, but um, a phrase involving numbers. So we see numbers here. <laughs> letters possibly we don't have any letters in ours hallelujah or operations and we see operations in here those little floating numbers are powers a, a type of mathematical operation something to do um that being said what do i mean when i call an expression exponential uh, i just mean that it has an exponent in it okay so stop overthinking it stop panicking at the side of big words exponential expression is some bit of math basically with an exponent in it all right, so I want to match each one of those exponential expressions to its expanded or factored form. Again, the GED is not a vocabulary test. Nobody's going to say to you, what's the expanded form? What's the factored form? But what you do need to realize is that exponents are a shortcut way of writing about, or I shouldn't say a shortcut way, but a, another way of writing about repeated, ooh, not just multiplication, repeated multiplication. And that's what I'm talking about when I say that there's an expanded or a factored form. I'm talking about writing it as a repeated multiplication problem. So when you take a look at an exponential expression like this one, the big number with its feet on the floor is called a base. Again, just let this roll over you. You don't have to memorize that for the GED. But what you do need to know is that's the number that's multiplying. It's multiplying and it's multiplying itself. So a lot of students go, oh, it's multiplication. This is just four times five, four to the fifth power. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying four is multiplying by itself. And you might say, well, what's the five about then? Well, that tells you how many fours are multiplying. So four times four times four times four. When I say four to the fifth power, it's another way of expressing the idea of four multiplying by itself five times. And so A over here matches with this six. These are five fours multiplying. Beautiful. Now let's move a little faster now that we understand this. So this is the number three multiplying by itself two times. So two threes not adding, multiplying. So that matches right there with two right across from it. Now, don't get panicked when you see four to the first power. What does that mean? It just means a single solitary four. So there it is, one single solitary four. And it's kind of silly to think about one four multiplying by itself. So there's not even a time sign. There we go. So what's this? This is a five multiplying by itself four times. So one, two, three, four, fives multiplying D matches with three. And two to the third power means two multiplying by itself three times. So there we go up with one, two times two times two, or three twos multiplying. And now finally, one to the fourth power. A lot of students want to simplify it. That's not what I asked you to do. So don't tell me the final answer. Just show me the factored form. That means four ones multiplying. So one, two, three, four, and F matches with V. Wonderful. If you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.